whenever free body diagrams and equilibrium equations are not enough to determine the internal or reaction forces at different locations of a member subjected to external loads, we refer to these problems as statically indeterminate problems. The name comes from the fact that statics alone is not enough to find the internal or reaction forces. In these cases, the equilibrium equations can be used together with the relationships involving the deformations to write enough equations to solve for the number of variables we find in the system. Statically indeterminate problems where we use deformation information to find reaction or internal forces don't exclusively occur for axial loading and axial deformation problems. When we cover torsion, bending, and transverse loading, you'll see that statically indeterminate problems can be present for any type of stress and therefore the strain, and with it, the deformation equations will help us find unknown loads in most cases. For statically indeterminate problems, lectures and textbooks and mechanics of materials courses usually present the superposition method, the most common method used to solve statically indeterminate problems. However, there's really no need to split any problem into two separate problems to get to the solution and in fact, it just takes longer. So let's look at one of the most common examples of a statically indeterminate problem where the superposition method is used. Notice that the only external load is causing axial loading only, and that a sum of forces in the x direction will not suffice to solve for the reactions at A and C. We only have one equation with two unknowns, RA and RC. And notice that the sum of forces in the y or z direction would not help in any way since there's not even external loads that are oriented up or down or into or out of the screen. Additionally, you might think that a sum of moments would help since this is usually what we also use for statically determinate problems. But since any location along the structure will be located on the line of action of the only external load and the two reaction forces, no sum of moments equation will bring any additional information. This basically sums up what statically indeterminate problems are in terms of equations. None of the three sum of forces equations nor the sum of moments equations about any location within the structure will give us enough information to solve for the unknown variables. In this case, we use the axial deformation expression we developed in the previous lecture to add one more equation that will give us the missing information. To briefly explain this superposition method I mentioned earlier, in case your instructor does use it and requires it for the solution of your exams, we'll use this same example. If, using the superposition method, we would remove one of the constraints and see how the structure deforms. For example, without the wall at C, we could calculate how much ABC is stretching, or its equivalent, how much C is being displaced now that there is no wall there. The displacement at C would be equal to that of B with respect to A, plus that of C with respect to B. Since there is no internal force between B and C, that deformation would be zero, and for B with respect to A, we would have an internal tensile force equal to the external load. This would allow us to calculate the overall displacement. Then, we would superpose a second scenario where the wall is now there, at C, causing a reaction. And because we already took care of the external load, this new superposed scenario doesn't have it in it. The quote-unquote trick here is that since C is not moving in the real scenario, the reaction force C in the second superposed case should be compressing the rod by the same amount that case 1 elongated it. Since the internal force in this second case is the reaction force at C, both sections are subjected to that force, which means we can write the two section deformation expressions with that being the internal load. By doing this, we can solve for it using the information deflection from the first case. With the reaction force at C, we can go back to the statics equation and solve for the reaction at A. Now, like I mentioned before, this is only useful to you if your class instructor requires you to use the superposition method. The main alternative, and it will always be a quicker procedure, is to just write the displacement of C in terms of the actual internal forces, and equal that to its displacement of zero. With the free body diagram, and always assuming positive reaction and internal forces, which follows the very important suggestion and explanation covered in the previous lecture, link below, we see that the internal force from A to B is minus RA, and from B to C, minus RA minus 20. Solving for RA, 
and substituting the given values, we find a numerical solution for the reaction force at A, and with that information and the sum of forces, we solve for RC. As you can see, without the superposition method, we are not performing extra calculations, like in this case, the theoretical displacement of C if the wall wasn't there, and we're not splitting the problem into two axial deformation problems. We're only writing one equation that allows us to solve for one of the reaction forces right away. The negative values are of course expected, since the reaction forces would be actually pointing left. The reason we don't just assume the correct and very clear direction of the reaction forces is precisely because of that. It's not always obviously clear. The same happens with internal loads. We assume they are tensile, so if we get positive values, they are indeed tensile, and for a negative value, they are compressive, which follows the general convention for tension and compression. This is apparently clear when we substitute the actual values of the reaction forces in the free body diagram. AB is under tension and BC is under compression. Like mentioned before, statically indeterminate problems are also present in other types of stresses, like for example torsion. An equivalent problem in torsion, to this example, would be to have an external torque applied to a rod within two walls. Statics alone would also give us one equation with two unknowns, and we would have to use the deformation expressions, in that case the angle of twist, to solve for the reaction torques at the walls. But more in torsion and bending, statically indeterminate problems later. Links below. Specifically for axial loading, statically indeterminate problems can occur when other topics we've covered so far are also present, like for example thermal expansion due to changes in temperature that we already covered in the previous lecture video, link below. So let's look at an example related to temperature changes and keep in mind that the two scenarios covered in this video are not the only types of statically indeterminate problems. For other examples, make sure to check the additional example videos linked in the description below. Let's look at a rod of two cylindrical portions AB and BC that is barely touching two walls. By the way, that just means that the initial reaction forces at the wall are zero. The AB portion is made of steel and the portion BC is made of aluminum. What are the stresses in each section and what is the deflection of point B when there is a rise in temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit? Remember to try this problem on your own before watching the solution. If the temperature rises, the member will try to expand, but since the walls won't allow that, the length of the member remains the same, even though the temperature change is trying to make it elongate. Finding the non-zero reaction forces at the walls would be a statically indeterminate problem, since the statics alone would only show us that the reaction at C is the opposite of the reaction at A. However, we know that the deflection of A or C, whatever we want to use, is zero. So let's write that the deflection of C with respect to A is zero, which means that the deflection of B with respect to A plus the deflection of C with respect to B is zero. From A to B, we have both an axial deformation due to the internal force and the temperature changes, and we have the same two expressions for section BC. Following the positive assumption for all unknown forces, the internal load from A to B is minus RA, as is the internal load from B to C. Notice that FAB is interchangeable with FBA and FBC with FCB, because for deflection purposes, they are both tensile forces, and therefore there's no need to add an extra negative sign. Substituting the values, we find an equation from which we can solve for the reaction at A, in this case a positive reaction, meaning a compressive internal force and consistent with what we would expect. And with that reaction, we can calculate the normal stresses using the axial loading normal stress expression. To find the deflection of B, we can use the two terms that correspond to the displacement of B with respect to A, since A is the wall and therefore is not moving, substitute the now known reaction at A and evaluate. This positive value indicates that B moved towards the right. For more statically indeterminate problems, as well as the other lectures of the Mechanics of Materials course, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.